Let's see if I can position that on my jerry rigged. Sorry, a bit late. Hi. <laughs> and this is, I think, the first time we've officially, I might be wrong, but pandemic brain officially met. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Um, I was a little late because I saw you had a lightsaber, so I had to bring my, I had to go grab, <laughs> <laughs> I had to go with the theme, I guess. And yeah. Yeah, I, um, have you picked up the new ones? No, they dropped the 14th, don't they? Huh? Have you picked up the color changing ones or had someone? I, um, I actually don't live anywhere near the parks. Um, I, oh. yeah, as soon as I saw the episode where, you know, Mandalorian, where she was in it, um, I basically, I went to see, you know, how much resellers were selling them for and I found the cheapest mm. one and I, I waited a couple hours to make sure I wasn't being too impulsive. <laughs> <laughs> and then Fair. I bought it from like a, a parks shopping service. So it was a little bit more than retail, but I had heard well, that they were making those ones. Did um, you get the, the signed one, the Ash Ashley signed one? I didn't get the signed one, no, but. Well, I think we should introduce ourselves because I'll just start talking and then just keep going. I'm Alexandra and um, Catastrophic on Instagram. I'm Elizabeth, aka Lady of Time Cosplay. Um. <laughs> and we're planning on talking about all the amazing Star Wars, in particular, releases that happened at the investor meeting because there was a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Monica said this talk for 30 minutes and I'm like just 30 just 30 because I I have a lot of opinions and a lot of thoughts and yeah. um, I'm sure you do too yeah so did how do you want to start it off do you want to start I with mean, Ahsoka <laughs> probably I mean because before like I mean before everything like shut down at the early earlier this year I'd really only ever seen the movies I hadn't even seen for like the first season of Mandalorian yet and so you know I had time so I, I watched Clone Wars <laughs> I finished Clone Wars in like two to three weeks like all of it <laughs> that's intense because I'm still slowly working my way through but I think I've slowed down in the last couple seasons because I know what's yeah. gonna happen and yeah. I just every time Anakin and Obi-Wan and Ahsoka are on the screen I'm just like I'm already in emotional pain <laughs> thanks guys um so I guess talking about Anakin and talking yeah. about Obi-Wan. I'm, I've been super excited about Obi-Wan having his own standalone series because I love Ian McGregor. I love Obi-Wan. Um, I'm super, super stoked. And they were teasing, I don't know if you picked up on it, but Disney was teasing Anakin because they kept posting like old, like behind the scenes with him and Padme oh. on like the, the CGI, whatever animal that was from the picnic, like from I think it was Genesis. Uh, but he has been confirmed to be yeah. returning as um, Sith Lord Darth wow. Vader. You know, which... like I, I've been he hearing the rumors, but, you know, most of the rumors were like, oh, maybe it'll be Clone Wars flashbacks. And they're like, no, he's coming back as Vader. And I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> oh. And, I'm, and I'm hoping, because they're going to have him under contract again, that they're going to pull him for, for uh, flashbacks with Ahsoka mm -hmm. in that series. Yes, I know. Like, if Ahsoka doesn't find Obi-Wan in the series, and if he doesn't get to find out that she is okay, essentially, it, that she isn't, that, that she's alive, that she survived everything, I will be very upset because just, I, I, I keep seeing people refer to her as his grand Padawan, which I oh, think is no. a I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Ahsoka really needs <laughs> because he just he needs to know that she's okay and she needs to know that he's okay so hopefully there's there's hopefully. there's so much opportunity and because jo um favreau and Filo filioni right i'm mm -hmm. saying that right i, I, I read yes. and my brain anyways they're directing so i have high yeah. hopes that yeah. um hopefully we'll get some force ghost anakin skywalker not some just back edited force ghost anakin um as um that happened which is unfortunate which, which I have mixed feelings on and I and yeah. I and I love Hayden Christensen I am upset about how he was kind of bullied out of the series out of the mm -hmm. um the fan fran franchise really so I'm really glad that the fans have kept up the hype and brought him I, I think put pressure on Disney and brought him back and yeah. um so I'm s 
super excited for all of that. I know if you've watched um, like the making of Mandalorian, I know it's called something more pretentious, but yeah. on Disney Plus, they talk about how, um, or I don't know if it was on that, but it was on something supplemental material where they talk about how Ewan came back and was trying on stuff during the Mandalorian. Like he, they had his, his full on costume, his saber, uh -huh. his boots and everything. And I think it was like on the set, same stage area as they yeah. were filming Mandalorian. And so it was like, it was like, I never left. And he's like, I got really emotional. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't watch like, that. I should, but I just haven't yet. <laughs> it's really interesting. Um, I'm an engineer, so I found it fascinating because they go into all a lot of little, the technical bits and pieces of it and um they also have a whole episode where they're where they're talking to the directors and in the first season i believe they're like five different directors that yeah. kind of switch off and collaborate um and i i bring that up because uh deborah chow is going to be directing obi-wan kenobi and she directed two of the episodes of the first season of mandalorian um she uh, episode three and seven, I believe. I, I wrote it down to be like prepared. So three was the sin, and s chapter seven was the reckoning, and she directed those. Um, yeah. So I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, I know I'm talking a lot, but for Ahsoka, what are you hoping to see for that series? I, I mean, because I did also after I finished Clone Wars, I, it took me a little bit longer to finish, but I also watched Rebels, which was really really good like I wasn't expecting like because I, I essentially was like I found out that Ahsoka was in Rebels I'm like oh let me watch it but then I fell in love with all the, all the other characters so I mean a lot of people were hoping for a direct Rebels sequel not necessarily just the Ahsoka show but hopefully they they tie up some of the loose ends from from Rebels um like with I haven't Ed. seen Rebels so don't spoil me I'm slowly working through but yeah. I know like I mean spoiler has been kind of broken down but I'm just trying to avoid um so go ahead but <laughs> yeah I'm um, <laughs> yeah and how do I put this? I mean essentially at the end she and Sabine who is also who is another Mandalorian which is why I kind of line about you know, Mando's line about you know a, a Mandalorian mm -hmm. and Jedi working together they'll never see it come he's worked with Mandalorians a lot before um they go off to try to find um this other character who was, you know, a main part of the series, uh, because he, he, he basically had to like get this other guy away from the, the, the fighting that was going on. Cause with Thrawn, which was mm -hmm. made a drop in Marian. Yeah. Um, so he kind of like was able to get him away, but they don't know where he wound up. So at the end of Rebel, Ahsoka and Sabine go off to look for, for Ezra and, and, and Thrawn essentially. <laughs> So yeah. I'm hoping to address that a bit because the end of Rebels is like the it is all, also coincides with the end of the original trilogy. So okay, no. it's on my list to watch. There's so much yeah. to watch and only so much yeah. time yeah. and brain energy. Um, I'm gonna look into the comments because I always forget to do this, but mm -hmm. I definitely agree with Monica. Chimed in. It'd be good to have Hayden back. Yes, um, I think he got a big raw deal, but I will keep my opinions on that to a low, a low roar. Um. Yes, Bad Batch. I'm excited about Bad Batch. I haven't gotten to the point in Clone Wars where they've shown up. However, I have a lot of friends that are super, super fans of the, the Clone Wars, and so I've gleaned information from them, and I that was one of the trailers I was actually able to, like, watch while they were dropping on the and streaming while I was yeah. supposed to be working. Don't listen to this, anyone I work with. Um, and I was yelling, because it was just... I'm so excited. I love the clones. They make me emotional. Um, yeah. And I haven't even gotten to Order 66. So, like, yeah, I'm just yeah. ready to just feel broken. <laughs> yeah. yes. it'll, it'll be interesting to see if they try to tie it into anything else. Like, I'll be interested to see if, like, Rex shows up or, so, you know, anything. But yeah. I also, when I was rewatching the trailer, I'm not 100% sure because sometimes I don't. Because I, I still, that the helmets are sometimes all look the same, but it looked like Fennec Shand was in the Bad Batch trailer. Yes. And I, I stand like, Fennec. Wait a, <laughs> Wait a second. I was like, hold on. <laughs> I'm here, Fennec. Um, I have a lot of opinions about some of the female uh, actor, actress, I mean, I say actors in The Mandalorian, and I'm going to like set those aside since I'm on the Tokyo Geek account. But I'm really excited um, that. 
she is taking a bigger role in season two. Yeah. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Cause like, I know so I have several friends that are intentionally waiting to binge it all out. So next week ah. we have your opportunity to binge it all. <laughs> binge I know. It all. Oh, oh, like I was, thinking I'm like oh my gosh that's that's next week is the finale hopefully it's a longer episode than we've been getting because they like yeah these 35 episodes I'm like I get it but like, I want more <laughs> always always want more um someone mentioned hopefully we can see her hunt down Thrawn yes I mean Ahsoka hunting anyone down is just good good quality mm -hmm. um my my only like not my only but like my big opinion about that is please do the action please please do the action choreography better um, I don't know personally why they made some of the changes they like not some of the changes but some of the choices they did when I mean it is live action however you have um, Hayden and Ewan just going hard ham on some choreography work I don't know if it just wasn't in the budget to train as much as they did because it wasn't a full like feature film or mm -hmm. if Rosaria Dawson wasn't comfortable or if they just made a choice to not go that far into and not make that the focus of yeah I did see somebody pointed out um that if if you watch because she does seem to have a bit of a different fighting style that she uses mm -hmm. with hers in, in the live action but somebody pointed out I'm gonna grab my lightsaber so I can demonstrate <laughs> well while you're grabbing your lightsaber um someone <laughs> bringing, bringing Delta Squad in hopefully yes. there's so many good clone stories like even ones that were only mentioned briefly like um I just rewatched the episode with uh Gregor and I'm like oh, he's such a good like and he's only I think for one episode that I know of and I'm like but he's quality um yeah the lightsabers you mentioned because she yeah, so she backhand wheels right yeah because because when I saw a lot of people were was saying that she wasn't holding it like she usually does especially especially um you can see it more when you do watch Rebels because these lightsabers did first show up in Rebels mm -hmm. um and somebody pointed out that when she loses her other her other saber, when she adjusts her when um, she does adjust her grip so that she is holding it like she does in the animation. Okay. And somebody was like, "Oh, it's kind of like the moment where in Princess Bride where they both say, I 'I'm not actually left-handed.'" So, <laughs> so like I mean... basically the post was kind of saying like maybe she was holding back so that she could try to get information as she was fighting this woman. And then when she, you know, knocked the lightsaber out of her hand, she switched to be like, okay, well, I'm not messing around anymore. So that, that was one thing I pointed out. So, I mean, I don't I know for sure that's what they were going for, but that's, that's one thing that I saw. It's, that. it's just like, we don't know, like, why exactly she had to, like, when, and I mean, they know, we know when the switch to two sabers happened, but they never, like, ever explained. Like, no. I haven't gotten to a point where they've explained it. So correct me if I'm wrong. Do they ever explain it? Like, no. <laughs> Okay, cool. Nope. I know there's fan theories because I was talking to my yeah. friend about it, but yeah, and and it's a whole different thing with with her her, her rebels lightsabers too, which I can't really explain without spoilers. Like no, that. no worries. Um, yeah. da, 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 da. Did you want to talk about Rangers of the New Republic because this one is new to me? I was gonna say like I'm excited for anything that John Favreau and Dave Filoni put out honestly like I'm here for every series that comes in but this is not one that I can speak on as aggressively as some of the other series so if you can yeah sit. I mean I don't know exactly what it's going to be about I like my only thought that I had about it is like I hope they have Hera in it who is one of the main characters in in Rebels she is the Twilight Twilight pilot um, of the ghost which you can actually see people have pointed out that you can see the ghost in um, different parts of I think you could see it in Rise of Skywalker, but also there's like little Easter eggs in Rogue One. Like Ooh. they over the over like the loudspeaker in one scene, it says you know Hayden General Sundula, who was who is Hera. You can see Chopper, who is the her droid in one of the shots. So I'm kind of hoping because she is a pilot, maybe we'll see her because <laughs> she she's a cool character too. Like all the characters in Rebels are cool and like they deserve so much more love. <laughs> I've heard good things. I know Ezra's um, saber is like he 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 engineered it to be a saber blaster, which I think yeah. is, and I think it's one of the ones they have on display um, in Tomorrowland um, in Disneyland. Yeah. Um, so let me look at the comments and see. Keep keep remembering to look at the comments. Uh, da -da -da -da. Who should play a live action Thrawn? 
like, I know there have been some folks throwing out Benedict Cumberbatch, but I think he's a high cost actor to pull in. Yeah. But he might for the fun of it. I don't know. Disney already, already works with him. I yeah, guess. I, that was like that's who popped in my head initially, especially because if if you look at the character, and he's got he's got the cheekbones for it, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's he's probably going to be busy, so I don't know. Like I am. Yeah. I'm excited from, about all that, but like. Yeah. Start. I mean, it also depends, you know, how much he's aged, too, because it is, you know, yeah, because they, they did say that the Ahsoka series is going to be in the same kind of timeline area as Mandalorian is, so it is a few years later down the line, so I don't know, you know. Yeah, and speaking of that time frame, that's the time frame Rangers of the New Republic yeah. are, is going to be set, so... You hoping for like Hera or Ezra to show up. I just want Cal Kestis to show up in live action. I want the Mantis crew. I'm here. Like I, people that know me are like, please, Zan, shut up about this because I want to see Cal Kestis. Y'all got the actors and actresses. Like you got them. They mocap down in Santa Monica for like the game. And hopefully, okay. I can't remember if there's a Fallen Order 2 already confirmed or not, but um, sure hope so. Um, yeah. But he's uh, another one of the Jedi's that's alive so i'm hoping that maybe he gets pulled into any of the i'm just gonna leave it broad any of the live any and all of the live action that are set in that time frame yeah i haven't played any that i don't i'm not huge into video games i just don't have the setup for it or anything but i know a lot of people really love that character so that would be really it's awesome really a good it's a really good game and it's really fun for like saber fighting i put it on story mode because i'm not the gamer i once was and so i didn't want to like keep dying um and so I, I, I wanted it for the story, but he's one of the few um, Jedi's that has, I think that obviously is left, but has the ability to sense force echoes so he can mm -hmm. touch objects and get memories from them, which uh -huh. I think would be fantastic to co incorporate into live action. Like, yeah. I think it'd be great to incorporate into the Mandalorian for reasons. Um, I would love him to meet Ahsoka uh, because they start off they start up there's there's a one part where he's listening to obi-wan kenobi's like broadcast at in like revenge of the sith that's like the republic has fallen um the empire has risen like don't go the jedi handle's not safe like be like yeah. don't come back girl you're yeah. like, like in big trouble um so just putting it like, very low key it's putting it very simply but um it's that whole crew it's all it's pretty much all new characters to the universe there's a few that pull in and i think that any one of them or the entire squad would be great just great to see on screen and it's not like they would need to cast um new new people it's not like thrawn we're like who would play thrawn who would look right. like thrawn they mocapped the actors yeah they did an amazing yeah. job so i would yeah. recommend if you're not a gamer to maybe find a good let's play and if anyone has any recommendations for a Let's Play um, of Fallen Order, um, I definitely, when I post this, drop them in the comments so people can, I guess, indulge if they don't have the setup for it because the character development is really wonderful. I know this is supposed to be a Star Wars announcement, but, like, it's all interconnected, and I'm so stoked for that. Yeah. I, they're taking the same approach as they are. Uh, Disney is taking the same approach as they are with um, Marvel, yeah. where they're – intertwining them all and as someone who's a, a six a comics 616 fan i think that's a great way to go for the star wars universe especially with the caliber of storytelling that's coming yeah and the, the, the talent they're they're pulling for um directors and writers and and casting it's just i'm so excited okay i can't believe that ahsoka held back yeah me me too and so like i'm giving the benefit benefit of the doubt that it was there was a good reason for it because that episode was a love story of ahsoka like her mm -hmm. little mannerisms here and there like she did such a good job I and mean, you, you there are some nitpicky things you get like the, the, the choreo her is it leku yeah I think that's that's one. and then um there was one more nitpick that someone had Regardless, they were very minor because Dave Dave directed that episode and yeah. he directed it as it was a his a love story to that character and I think the they use silence really well they use light really well I think a, for all intents and purposes it was a wonderful episode and I need to rewatch it honestly. Yeah. Um, I
watching it earlier actually i'm just like oh it's so much fun because I'm, I'm i'm planning on making that costume which is why i bought the face nice. you know those, those pantaloons are <laughs> <look> really comfy <laughs> yeah. oh i'm like oh that looks that looks actually very nice because oh, like no. all our costumes have like leggings and stuff which i don't mind but i'm like oh like big pants that'll be nice too. <laughs> i love leggings so like i can go either way but those look like super comfy so it's a, um, yeah, I'm like slightly worried about is because I, I go uh, by myself to conventions a lot. I don't quite know how I'm going to reach my back <laughs> for painting, but so I might do the back of the costume a little bit different depending. Cause... That's, that's fair. There's always that <laughs> tricky, like I used to, I, when I started cosplaying, I like just threw myself solo into it. So like I was, and I did like Rogue from X-Men, like the full body suit. I had to really, I had to ask strangers, I was like, can you help me out of this so that I can use the bathroom, please? Uh, <laughs> so... You gotta accommodate a little bit, but I'm sure you'll figure out a way. To, uh, there's the whole community is great about helping with that um, tangent. Sorry, um, <laughs> someone. Okay, so do you think that Accolade could refer to Dark Sidious's master or his time as a Sith apprentice? God, I hope Palpatine is not the focus of this because there is so there's such a long thousands of years of history of dark we like dark force users and i would love to see i don't know what it's about yeah, no. <laughs> we don't have any yeah, sneak information for that. i would love to see how the story of how it became the law of two i think mm -hmm. that'd be very interesting because correct me if i'm wrong the lore is like it used to be a bunch of more uh, like more than what two dark wielders and then it was so much infighting they couldn't focus their attentions on getting their like i guess plan like a, a vision in play because there was just in, it was factions of infighting and power grabbing so having yeah. just one one apprentice and one master made it a little um more final more like direct i guess like focus yeah. would be the word i'm looking for actually well, um, they have you know <laughs> dark side people all over the place especially in in, in um rebels um they've got these characters called oh the inquisitors and their dark side wielders too where but it's basically their job to go after any of the yeah. Jedi or jedi affiliated people that got missed in order 66 um and i think there's at least three of them that show up in in rebels there so. are more in fallen order oh, okay yeah yeah, yeah. there and it's it's such a good part of the story that i don't want to spoil it but um they are, a lot of them are previous de Jedi and Force wielders that were captured and tortured until they turned to the dark side. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's <laughs> pretty in Rebels as well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, is a, this is a children's show, y'all. Let's <laughs> no. talk about slavery and death and torture and, like, killing people oh, all the time. Right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, Rebels is a little bit less so than, than Clone Wars with the, but, you know, it's still, like, there's still character death and you know, yeah. big things happen, so. <laughs> so, I thought Rangers was a Cara Dune spinoff. Like, I don't know. Yeah. But I have opinions with a capital O about the actress that plays Cara Dune. I love Cara Dune as a character. That's what yeah. I'm going to focus on. I love her as a character. I hella, excuse my lines, I hella appreciate that they put a strong woman acting as like, and, and in the show. Like, she is physically strong. Like, when the last episode of season one where she's dragging him mando back into like their little little hide in the, the bar pretty much um that's her that's her and him that's not a dummy that's her being strong as hell and yeah. because she um why am i forgetting her name right now probably because i have opinions on it um <laughs> she was an mma fighter uh she was angel dust and deadpool the, the live action Deadpool and I fell in love with her then like because she is such a powerful woman and that's something that John Favreau made certain to show that was one of the things he wanted to highlight he wanted um, her to have short short sleeves and so you could see like she's strong she's not and I'm not saying you can't be it doesn't matter your body type you can be strong at any body type but she looks like she could do you damage physically oh, and they They've kept her as a brawler in through this season too, which I appreciate. Yeah. Um, minus my feelings on, on, on her. Um, I don't know if, if I'm cor incorrect on guessing on Rangers. If it is her, I will. I will probably watch it. I will have bigger capital O opinions on it. Is 
that they didn't <laughs> see much, which I thought was interesting. I think, um, cause I also found it interesting that they didn't say much about Black Panther 2 either. Like they, cause a lot of the theories are that it would be Shuri, but then stuff happened with Letitia. So who knows? They haven't said anything. <laughs> that was something else. You yeah. and I need to talk about that at some point. <laughs> Not on this live. But I saw that one that when that happened, I was like, yeah. all right, then I'm going to pack oh, the game. Trending. They say something about Black Panther 2, and then I was like, oh. Yeah, I... The one thing I will say about Black Panther 2, I know this is not Star Wars, but I appreciate that they are not going to try and recast Black Panther and T'Challa. Yeah. I mean, to, I'm saying T'Challa because obviously the Black Panther Panther is probably, not obviously, but it's probably going to get passed down. And a lot of fan favorite fan folks were, were saying passed down to Shuri because it's in the lineage. Like, it, she's already in the comics i think as uh, i think she, at some point she becomes black panther in the comics yeah. i don't i don't read that that series so please don't hold that against me but um yeah and you said stuff ha like stuff happened but stuff has happened with other actresses in disney yeah. and actors and they're still in the franchise so yeah we're gonna see i'm just glad they's not recasting um chadwick because that was that yeah. still hurts um for those okay. that are local to Southern California and are okay with going to downtown Disney with all the safety precautions. Um, there is a beautiful mural up by uh, Nicholas Smith that um, shows uh, Chadwick as, like dressed as Black Panther with a, um, I mean, I won't spoil it, but it's just gorgeous mural and it's very, it, it tugs at the heartstrings and I like, I cry, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Be interesting too to see uh, i know we're going kind of off topic here but it'll no. be interesting where they go with um the avengers expansion over in in dca too um because mm, yes going to wakanda we so. need to have our own live on we need to have a live on this because i as i told monica i have a lot of opinions about how they're expanding the marvel universe as a comic yeah. reader um back to i'm a, I'm a pull it yeah. back to star wars um do we think we might see a young luke skywalker during the mandalorian i think sebastian mm -hmm. stan could be i think sebastian stan would be an excellent like look and i love i love sebastian stan for the most part um and he already has a good relationship with disney obviously yeah. and <laughs> there's there's so much like and, and you see a lot of um overlap in some of the casting choices uh between the different factions, the factions of Disney, the different um, franchises yeah. of Disney. I yeah, think it would be it would be slightly younger Luke, though. I think no, um, it have to be for for Obi Wan because I think they said it's only like ten years in. Well, they said the Mandalorian. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, not they. Like uh, Arbiter two eight three brought it up. I'm just, I'm I'm probably really behind on on comments. Uh, is, is it so it is so huge and i haven't even touched the novels um i the comics are great the poe dam I, I, I have it it's on my list to read it's like on my kindle but the poe dameron um comics really good there's yeah. one that just got recently re uh, like uh, put out that i've only seen art of and somehow they made poe look like someone made his face in silly, put silly putty much like the the terrible like loki comics um where the art the cover art was great and then for some reason it looked like king of the hill was drawn and nothing against king of the hill it's a stylistic like choice and it works for king of the hill not so much for really pretty boy loki <laughs> and, and marvel but yeah. to each their own i can't draw that good that well yeah, or, yeah. Or I, have, I haven't read any of the star wars comics i've heard really good things i know a lot of people were not happy with the choices they made with Poe in Rise of Skywalker, given the backstory they'd already kind of established in the comics. Um, but that's as much as I know about the Star Wars comics. But yeah. so, do you think Boba will become ruler of Mandalore, or short become should become Mandalore ruler since comic open season is now? I don't know anything about this. This these comics. Um, the only comics that I've really read of Star Wars, which this segues into one of the other shows, is Lando. And L3 better be coming, because there's a, Land um, a Lando show, and if L3 is not in it, I'm going to lose my mind, because L3 was peak. It was, she was wonderful. I'm so, I'm so emotionally torn. Um, 
we can segue into Rogue One in a second. But I was so emotionally torn when she kicked the bucket. That <laughs> <laughs> well, she was incorporated into the Millennium Falcon, which I think is really, like, I think was a really excellent choice. And I don't know if it was something that was stated as canon prior, because um, the, the canon is so huge. I don't know everything about it. And that's fine. Uh, you don't have to know everything about everything to be a fan of something. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just put that out there. Um, so Lando Calrissian is getting his own Disney Plus series. I yeah. am excited. Yeah, I'll be interested to see where that falls within the timeline, because Lando does actually show up in, in Rebels a couple times. Does he? Yeah. <laughs> you know who would have a really good, like, you know what would be a really fun series? Hondo. Just Hondo or Naka. <laughs> I know. Being, just like, I like kids today. I'm not going to kill them or try and take, like, okay, Hondo. You're good to see your morals are so fluid. Like, <laughs> yes, Hondo's in, in Rebels as well. And I didn't know, because I, I went to um, Galaxy's Edge for the first time in, back in February after Gallifrey won this year, because I usually go to Disneyland. You know, I'm like, I'm out there. I'm out that way anyways. I might as well go kind of thing. <laughs> Um, but I, at, yeah, at that point, I'd only really seen the movies and everything. And so, like, yeah, I went on the Millennium Falcon ride. I was like, oh, this is a cool animatronic, you know, whatever. Not really thinking that much of it. And then, you know, later I'm stuck at home with nothing better to do. And I'm like, oh, wait, it's that guy from, from the ride. I'm like, how old is this dude? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, alien races age at different rates. Yeah. I, I did want to, I don't know if you're reading the comments, but, um, Thomas A. Hearn said that you would look at great as a soak. And I figured... I'd bring that up because, yes, I agree. Um, yeah, my problem is getting my eyebrows down because I have very thick eyebrows, so the face paint is going to be a challenge. <laughs> face paint is fun. Um, I have not done it, but I know a few cosplayers who have done Ahsoka and who are wonderful and fantastic. And yeah. um, I watched will... a lot of videos of, of how to yeah, do it. As practice before. before you do it the first oh, time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh I would God. say... Because I, I bought some of that, like, eyebrow plastic off Arda wig, so I'm hopefully that'll help, help because I, I tried to do the glue method one time before for something, and I was like, this is not going to work. <laughs> some, some celebrities need to stay off social media. Gina Car Carano, or yes. Car that's it. I am that behind on the chat because I keep getting so excited. So, yeah. back to Lando. Yeah. And Justin Simeon? S-I-M-I-E-N, and I've never heard it, so I don't, I might be butchering it, um, but he is the creator of Dear White People, mm -hmm. so I'm already excited, and he's also a huge Star Wars, Star Wars fan, so doubly excited, because when, when fans of the material make stories from it, they get that stuff right. Just they look do. at Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Rest my case. Um, sorry. <laughs> accolade, da, 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 da. But um, the accolade is set in the High Republic era. Yeah. Going back to that. I'm using my cheat sheet notes from the Lucas <laughs> film. Give me a second. Yeah. Um, the droid story. No, 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 you know what? Do we want to talk about the droid story? Do we want to talk about Andor? Um, I mean, uh, I mean, hopefully they yeah. do something interesting with droid story because the the c3po and r2d2 episodes of clone wars were always kind of like eh, apart from one or two i like, love the droids so like i'm gonna argue yeah. with you but i like dumb yeah. no i see see. dumb humor i like yeah. puns and like silly things yeah. i because that tends to be i hope they do a really good job because they they tend to use droids in clone wars to show that they are, like, I don't say human, but they are more than just, and kind of, and, and fill in your word there, but they're more than just parts. Right. Yeah. Like, I, I like the characters, just like sometimes yeah. the art of them seem to drag on a bit longer than they needed to. <laughs> I, I'm trying to think of which, like, like, there was the one, I forget what season it's in, because I watched chronologically instead of, like, episode order, um, but, like, the one where they're stuck on a planet with these uh, with these other with this alien race and I just it it was a cool episode like I thought they did some interesting things with it but I'm like it felt like it was more episodes than longer than it needed to be necessarily I mean I do like the characters it's just like you know yeah. it depends on what the story winds up being yeah I, mean, I think it depends what they do like 
yeah who they encountered along the way and i think that's probably at least i think that would be an excellent choice for them to use it as a conduit to visit characters that we don't we can't fund or not we can't but like they, they don't see the value in funding a full series for them but our fan loved like characters so i imagine hondo might show up yeah. again or like etc cetera, etc cetera. like people we've yeah, seen in is. the series yeah because they showed up in like an episode or two of rebels as well um so <laughs> it just depends on what they did. if they said what when in the timeline that one's set i forget if they said um if that's like prequels or what it's still really early in the okay. stages um the pictures i've seen show younger lando but yeah. it, things can change like, this early in production like preliminary production things can change um the i'm trying to think do we want to we've talked droid story so maybe yeah. we get to talk about so my favorite movie in in the series is rogue one mm -hmm. Um, so I am absolutely stoked that they're doing, um, Andor. Uh, it's, it was such a great standalone movie. I think it was it, the, the whole last like 20 minutes had like just emotional, just well done. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a prequel series. So you're going to have Andor and how oh. he's de <laughs> developed his uh, relationship and why he's with the rebellion yeah. and it's i want to see him in k2 it because i haven't seen rogue one in a bit <laughs> I, I keep meaning to rewatch it but um it, i'll be interested to see if they show how he uso or something because k2so was like one of my favorite characters oh i love him I, I have so many i have so much love for droids uh my favorite is bd1 but he's from fallen order so you wouldn't know him and mm -hmm. He's, yeah, he's the best. He's the best, right? <laughs> but yeah, I, I love K two Sayas. Yeah, yeah. Um, I usually tell people my favorite droid is Wang, just because David Tennant voices him. <laughs> I learned this um, whenever I watched it. I think I learned it last night because um, that whole that whole arc when they go to Ilum broke my. I was just like, I was so emotional about it because you go to Ilum at some point. Spoiler alert on Fallen Order, mm -hmm. and some of the force echoes that you you can find overlap and so yeah. i hadn't seen so i had played fallen order and then was seeing these now and it's just like and seeing the the jedi temple five years after order 66 versus when it's open and operating yoda's there bringing in new padawans to find their crystals it's just it was emotional and it was so well done and it's and I was talking to a friend who saw the other order like she, she watched the full Clone Wars and then played Fallen Order watched her her wife play Fallen Order and she did just so discussing the discourse between like the like how just, it was a good discussion because we both have different perspectives but a lot of feelings on them <laughs> which I think is is when you do storytelling right yes yeah when you have the discussions, not just the titty baby screaming about things. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but you know what I mean. I do, and, yeah. And I oh, think, yeah. Wang is, of, go ahead. Yeah, but Huang is usually my, like, I, like, it's just such, it's, it's, he's a character that's in, like, one arc of Clone Wars, but I'm like, please, can he show up in yes. something else? Can David Tennant play him? It's, like, the only Emmy that David Tennant has. <laughs> really? You got an Emmy for that? He did. He got an Emmy for guest voice acting for doing Wang. I love which this. I think it's hilarious. It's his only Emmy so far. <laughs> and I'm like, I just really want you, you know, in, in Well maybe. <laughs> maybe you show up. Um there are two hundred named cast members. This is something I picked up from like the trailer uh for Andor. I was like Really? <laughs> so I'm excited about who wasn't mentioned in the big the big drop of information that happened yeah. um last week uh one thing that i think would be a great series and i'll touch on monica's comment in a second but what happened with darth maul and kira yeah i mean because we we do get uh, does kira get, show up at some point kira i don't uh, i 
can't remember if Kira showed it because I, I don't know exactly because like I only watch because like you know I watched Rebels all this year I yeah. don't know exactly what the how it the timelines match up and everything um but I mean you do <laughs> you do get closure on Darth Maul in Rebels because there is enough with Obi-Wan um but oh, good on Obi-Wan mm-hmm. <laughs> fair no I cry every time I watch for one too I don't cry a lot for for movies so pre- prequel to a prequel sorry I'm reading the comments I'm not just like randomly yeah. spouting things which I'm sure it's what it actually looks like surprised okay. that none of the shows are based on the sequel trilogy no I'm not really surprised um because of how the I mean with the reception that ending got yeah. and clearly I am I stand one Ben Solo uh, one good boy in Ben Solo. And um, <laughs> I have a, not more opinions of the Capitol, less political opinions, more opinions of the Capitol o on how that um, how they killed off their cash cow. <laughs> on, on a purely <laughs> monetary point. Like, well, let's just skip the storytelling bits because we could be here for a while to discuss the ending yeah. of TRS. And, I, and that's not the rabbit hole I'd like to go down this afternoon. Um, but, oh, yeah. just... Yeah, I know. He's, he, he's, he could he could have done a whole series on on redeemed Ben Solo having to no having I to know. actually get his redemption. Like I'm sorry, is is I'm my pet peeve of Star Wars is like ah oh, yes you're evil, you've come back to the light side. Now 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 you die because we yeah. can't actually write you having consequences. Like that mm-hmm. would be too I don't know something. Um, but it would have yeah. been really interesting. I know, because, like, some people were complaining. It's like, oh, I, because I saw some people being like, I hope they don't redeem him. He deserves, you know, da 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 da. I'm like, I'm sorry. How is. What? <laughs> I'm like, how is taking a character who has been manipulated in Abused. his, you know, based on kind of the extra stuff, you know, he was manipulated possibly before he was even born by Snoke slash Palpatine, whatever. How is taking him from place where he has like how and I'm trying to think how to phrase this basically they were like well he's you know awful and he went over to this dark side he can't be redeemed I'm like how is it not a good story to tell to take somebody who has been conditioned to believe in these extremist things and make it a story about how he comes back and how he is able to make amends I'm like that's an important story that I think people really important story across yeah. like, it can be applied to so many situations mm-hmm. and um unfortunately like, unfortunately in the films they don't give you enough flashbacks to really give you the impression that he was abused and manipulated as deeply as he was i don't yeah. think they really do in any of the feature films show what happens to an apprentice as as they're lear- like as they're they're learning on the dark side and has, as they're being turned and manip- like it's they don't because it's dark like it's <laughs> it's not a loving relationship it's not yeah. a like i'm gonna I teach you how to do this now no it's like i'm gonna beat the crap out of you and f- throw you off a cliff and uh if you use your powers and you're strong enough to not die then yeah yeah excellent because <laughs> kind of like how how clone wars shows you of anakin and more of what he went through oh i don't know if i just lost you oh there we go okay my- <laughs> no my battery gave me an announcement <laughs> so yeah but kind of, i'm hoping that maybe somewhere down the line kind of like how clone wars take took showed you more about anakin and showed you more about how all of everything that he went through that kind of added to why he did eventually fall to the dark side i'm hoping that maybe they'll do a, a series like that with yeah. ben that um, would honestly so be really- a good series yeah, it, it would. So I'm, I'm hoping, you know, we'll see. I mean, eight, even if he just shows up for like a minute in one of these these series, I would be very happy, especially if like, I would really love it if maybe, um, like, I haven't read a lot of the Star Wars books, but I read, oh, I can't remember the name of it now, the one that Claudia Gray wrote about um, Leia. Um, I've heard after. that's good. I've heard the Obi-Wan's good, too. Might be the lines. Um, I'm like, I would, you know, if they did a series based on that book, that'd be amazing. I'm like, I just, I, I want more people to, to, like, he's, 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 you know, he did some really awful things, but it's, I think it would be an important story to tell, you know, which is why I was yeah. so 
though I have some people, you know, theorize that um, there is in, again, kind of Rebels spoilers, but in Rebels, they show a kind of way where... The world between worlds. Possible. Yeah, the world between worlds where time travel is kind of is possible. So people were theorizing that maybe they'll use that yeah. to go back and, you know, fix stuff. I don't know, but it, it would be, you know, I, I just would, I would really like it if they would do something a little more with, with this guy here. <laughs> is there, there, is there any going to be an R-rated Star Wars? I don't know. I, like I don't know. Violence sometimes. <laughs> they have to artfully keep it PG-13. Um, yeah. I, I'd be, I mean, I'd be down, but I'm also like an adult and I'm, I was here yeah. for Deadpool 2 and Deadpool, um, so, and hopefully they'll make Deadpool 3 and hopefully, I'll, I'll get, into, that, that's a, that's a, a Marvel tunnel. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about, I think we've covered, unless Monica, if, if we've missed any of the ones. Oh no, we have missed ones. There is going yeah. to be two new Star Wars feature films. Yeah. And one of them is being directed by Patty. Yeah. So excited. <laughs> and those who don't know who Patty is, she's directing Wonder Woman. Yeah. And yeah. and her, her I think like in the trailer she's talking about how her father is a fighter pilot. And so I'm like, oh yes, this ties. She's passionate about this. I mean, she's always been a pa oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this one. I don't know how I forgot about it because um I just there's so much, honestly, is what it is. But I'm this. So this one's called Rogue Squadron, and it's going to be a big screen look coming uh, Christmas twenty twenty three. Um, planned for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. We have definitely learned this year that things can change. <laughs> and it says the story will introduce a new generation of starfighter pilots as they earn their wings and risk their lives in a boundary pushing high speed thrill ride and moved the saga into the future era of the galaxy. So. Patty Jenkins is, is directing this. And the cool thing about like her talking about it and how they like dropped this information is literally she walked and she like changed into the like she's on an air like like an air force like a base and she changes into the flight suit. And it's like, oh, you know, did I I've been waiting my whole life like to do this. My dad, like I like I my dad flew um flu fighter pilot, like just tying it in with her childhood and then she like puts it on, just walks and I'm just like, oh, this yeah. is so well done. <laughs> and um, just perfect hype trailer. Um, yeah. And I'm all for powerful women writing stories, directing stories, and hopefully there will be some female lead fighter pilots in that because like I think there needs to be focus on one. And I'm obviously biased because I am a woman and I like me some strong women. But a lot of the main fighter pilot like fighter pilots that they've had in the universe in um, the vi I know there's some in comics people have mentioned them I'm not comic can canon like inundated or, or like knowledgeable so I'm gonna say that on the big screen the times that are women are the fighter pilots is is one offs and they die or like one offs and like they're not like integral to the right I mean Rose Tico's sister was on the bomber, which let's not talk about the physics of how they were able to bomb in, in, in gravity with space, but um, yeah. <laughs> just in a gloss over that, that <laughs> science part. <laughs> but uh, but um, I'm really excited for this. I'm, I'm really excited for everything. It's just going to be so much. It's going to be so much, and um, before I get into how brilliant uh, Disney's marketing virtual and is, uh, there is also going to be a Star Wars feature uh, directed by one of my favorite directors, and I always butcher his name. Yes. You know, can you can you pronounce his name better than me? It's to, to oh, see now I'm thinking. Taiko Waititi. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, universe and sir. Um, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah. um, I read so like I I'll, I'll hear it at lunch, and then I'll look to read it on my notes, and I'm like, I don't remember how it's pronounced. Yeah. I think and Takita. Or to keep, to, it's something like that. I'm really bad with those two. He's amazing. Like, I'm like, excited. And it's like, then it's like, I got to say this out loud now. Uh, <laughs> if you want science that makes sense in sci-fi, watch The Expanse. Fair. It's on my list to watch, to be to be honest. That and the Killjoys season five, which if you like, if you, <laughs> it's my small little non-Star Wars plug. If you like space 
and bounty hunters and you liked Firefly, this is a sci-fi show that has five seasons. I haven't gotten around to watching. I own it the fifth season, mostly because I know I'm going to be emotionally crippled. Um, but it's written and directed by, I believe, the, the lost, the, the same lady that did The Lost Girl. It's amazing. It's about space bounty hunters. And it's a strong female lead. So win, 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 win. And the, the, the costuming, gorgeous. I, could, I couldn't replicate trying to cosplay them, but, like, kudos to anyone that does try because they're ornate and they're, like, sci-fi steampunky, like, and bright color. Anyways, that's my uh, star, uh, star Fantasy, not Star Wars plug right there. And we're going to go back to the Star Wars feature. <laughs> <laughs> back to your regular scheduled uh, live stream. Um, yeah. I am very very excited about him directing a Star Wars movie. Did they, is it just the one movie? Because at one point they had said trilogy, but then it seemed like it was just a one off, possibly. But I really loved his Thor movie, so I'm I love that movie. <laughs> I love him. like I love that he. So he's in the Mandalorian. You know that, right? Yeah, he was the droid. The uh, droid. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. oh shoot! I have it written down somewhere, but in the, yeah. the nanny droid. Yeah. <laughs> But that was him, yeah. which is hilarious because, like, I was watching that whole thing. I'm like, this sounds, he sounds familiar. I'm like, I don't know who they voiced it, but I'm like, I know him. I know, and I just couldn't put my finger on it. He's also Korg in, um, yeah. so he, <laughs> he's great. He's brilliant. And I think Kathleen's um, quote on him is, uh, his approach to Star Wars will be fresh, unexpected, and dot, 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 unique. Which yeah. I'm here for because <laughs> I love his sense of humor. Okay. I think he's just sorry, wonderful. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll it'll be definitely be fun, especially because I, I do like his sense of humor, and I like it when Star Wars doesn't take itself too seriously. You know, um, like I I will tell people one of my favorite Star Wars things is the videos from when uh, Disney did the dance off with the Star Wars stars. Oh my gosh! Hollywood studio. I don't... <laughs> This, like they they completely disregard canon throughout the entire thing, but they this to me. So I know they won't go like that far, but I do like it when there's there's the humor in there. Like like one of um, IG Eleven. Sorry, someone. Yeah, but the like it's there. If you haven't seen the dance off with the Star Wars stars videos, they are hilarious. I mean, there's like one part where. Padme and Vader are dancing to a Taylor Swift song. Oh my god, that is I don't and I don't just, know how I feel about this. It's it, you know, you kind of have to check your brain at the door, but it, it, they're 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 funny. <laughs> it's Fair. kind of a mess in terms of, you know, continuity and everything, but it's it, I mean, there's at one point where the entire stage is filled with Star Wars characters from oh across god. all different airs of the show and they're dancing to Opa Gangnam style. I I don't even like <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> to like they're fair. they're dumb and like I know people got really upset at Disney when they were doing these and they stopped doing them just like a few years before they started making the pre the, the sequel trilogy because they wanted to get serious about it, but I watched them whenever I just you know feel what? Like people <laughs> Um, and funny, Some but people I people just don't want other people to have fun that's not the same way they have fun, and then it's yeah. very frustrating because it's a form of gatekeeping. And get yeah. your like, there are more like, there are bigger issues to complain about yeah. than a something that brings joy and is clearly not meant to be like continuity canon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if you've got like Padme, um, if you've got like Padme. Ahsoka, Leia, and oh, I can't remember her name, the one with the big huge ponytail and the and the, the white skin, but she's got the big red ponytail and she's got like an antenna on her head. I can't remember her name. I can't remember And this. then the bounty hunter from the has like the, the, the veil. I can't remember their names. Dance There's so many names to be fair. <laughs> You've got well, that that dancing to material girls, you kinda just gotta go with it. Um, so but, but, like, if you've ever seen the clips or the gifs of Vader dancing, the can't touch this, that's where that's from. Okay, I'll have to, I'll have to check it out at some point. Yeah, they're, they're, they're dumb, but they're funny. Does, it, does anyone, can, can someone see, like, how long this has been going? Because I know I think an hour is the limit, and I don't see a timer on 
Yeah, I, I've got a clock in where it, um, I mean, I'm, you know, on the East Coast, so it's like 6.58 just now, so we're probably getting close. Okay, so I guess we can kind of like wrap it up at, um, who do we want to, like, is some more conversation about who, who we want to see. I will yell about how cast is to the end of the world, but um, a random thing that popped in my head, but can we get that, like, you know, the little kid, that the little Padawan, the Wookiee Padawan? Yeah. You know what? I would like a Wookiee Padawan. I would like, I, I hope that he somehow yeah. survived yeah. because, so who's the, so who do we know is alive in, or not is, so Cal Kestis is, is pretty safe. He survived 66, fairly certain. Um, obviously Ahsoka. Uh, I think there is hope that Ezra or Hera have survived. Am I missing people that we know of? I know there's like, fan hope that Mace Windu um, is somehow still alive. And I'm always, I'm always here for Samuel Jackson. And I find it hilarious. People are like, well, he fell down a pit. I'm like, Maul fell down a pit and was yeah. cut in half and he came back. Um, <laughs> ben fell down a cliff and uh, in a whole big giant pit hole and came back and then they killed him. But um, yeah. <laughs> but like there, the Star Wars has a great long history of people falling off in, into dark holes and then somehow coming back later um and i'm here for that if yeah. it means that samuel jackson's gonna like roll up all tired of some sh <laughs> basically be like pulp fiction and like star wars i, I i'm always here for samuel jackson yes, they, they but... even make it about that and in, in one of the um dance off with the star wars stars videos it's right. funny like the last one that they did which i think was in 2013 they even made a joke about we thought palpatine died last time and now watching it i'm just like oh yeah palpatine's on that list too <laughs> yeah. of people that have been yeeted into holes mm -hmm. and come back mm -hmm. yeah i i mean i really hope i want i really want to see ezra i hope they bring sabine back who who's the the mandalorian that ahsoka mm -hmm. was um looking for ezra with um, especially because if you look in the background of some of the, the character posters that they release after, like on Monday for any of the new ones, if you look at the, the art in the background, um, Sabine is a huge artist, which is part, a big part of her character in Rebels, and it really is style, so I'd be surprised if she doesn't show up somewhere, so hopefully she yeah. shows up too, because she's a cool character. But yeah, yeah Eric, I mean... And Chopper is my favorite droid besides besides um besides Wang, so <laughs> that's fair. I'm trying to think yeah. of who Chopper else would be because for those who are watching this season of Mandalorian or are caught up, um obviously we found one Jedi that's alive and there's talk of maybe finding another one. I don't think it's gonna happen in this season. We have one episode left and I yeah. think it would do a disservice to whoever they do bring into the universe as the next Jedi that was hinted at. Um, so I, so that's probably going to be next season, which yeah. I don't I mean, know when that's going to be, but about. like a really cool, cool cliffhanger. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I don't know exactly what will happen, but like, just like a lightsaber coming through the door and starting to go, if that was like, uh, that would be a good, oh, and then uh, except right. it's it's like... more than a year from when season two started. Cause they said Christmas next year is when the next season will be. So, oh really cool. man. But you know, this year went by in a flash of pain, misery, and timelessness. So maybe that. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, next year, once things are a bit safer, it'll just go really, really quick because we'll actually be able to do things again. Yeah. Um. Sure. I'll watch Rebels by then. Yep. Rebels. I'll watch. A... Yeah. So yeah. Is. So, there, so. I don't know how much time we have left, but there is another one. Uh, is it Visions? Yeah, that looks really cool. Like, I'm I'm not a huge anime fan, but it sounds like a really cool concept for them to do. Yeah, that's yeah. where I'm at. I'm not a huge anime uh, fan. A lot of times the styles put me off, but if the storytelling is as, like, high caliber as it's been on a lot of the other shows and the Disney Plus things, I'm more than willing to give it a chance. Like, yeah. the worst I can say is, like, I don't like the artistic style, but the plot was great and the characters were great, which is... Which yeah. is what I hope the, the biggest complaint I have with it is. Yeah, because I think they said it's it's not like a series long, because I think they said it's different people doing different episodes, so it'll be different. Oh, that's neat. So like the What If series almost. Yeah, I, I think that's what? kind of ish what they're going yeah. for. Like different, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be, sorry, or if it's going to be the same arcing, but that either way, I think it's going to be done in a really interesting way. Yeah. I hope they tackle it in similar regards to how wonderfully animated that um, 
uh, Spider into the Spider Verse was. Like, mm -hmm. I really dug that. I know it's a different studio, and I know yeah. it's like the way that Into the Spider Verse was handled definitely harkened from the comics. So, um, anyways, speaking of comics, oh, we did mention uh, Kylo Ren. Um, I would highly recommend reading his series. It does give you backstory on all the crap that he was pit put through and um, how he got pulled to the dark side and that whole process. Um, it's kind of depressing, but it gives you perspective into a character that's otherwise categorized as a like, flat view um, evil space Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm not... <laughs> Obviously, the Empire is meant to be like space Nazis pretty much but um, I think it brings more depth to the character and that's saying a lot because Adam Driver acted the hell out of that like mm -hmm. the the actors say what you want to say about the writing but the actors brought their A-game in, in the, 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 the new trilogy yeah. Um, yeah Adam I know one of the reasons he did the stunts is he didn't want anyone else like he wanted to be in control of Kylo Ren's mannerisms like he is that dedicated and nuanced to his acting. I haven't seen a lot of his other films, mostly because um, some of them I know *Marriage Story* is gonna wreck me, just because I like I have, I have divorce in my like it's not me, but like my family and everything. But um, everything I've heard that he's done has been top caliber. And if you haven't followed John Oliver and his his bits this year about Adam Driver and how that concluded, please do. It's delightful and a, and weird, but a joy, a, a joy of this year, I would say. And I won't simp too much on, which I think I'm using that word right. I've just picked it up from other people that use it a lot, um, on Adam Driver too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, is there anything else that we want to talk about? Otherwise, I'll just keep rambling about, like, Star Wars now. Yeah. My phone dies. Yeah. I mean, I, don't, I you know, I just, because they did say it's, what, 10, 10 new projects over for Disney Plus, I think they just said 10 new stuff. For just Star Wars. Star Wars and 10 new ones for Marvel. So I didn't go back and count, but it seems like they announced a lot. So it'll be interesting to see what else is coming. You know, they've got a lot that they can work <gasps> with, especially between um, the original trilogy and the sequel trilogy. I think they on a lot and hopefully they do because I like you said I think a lot of people really like the characters and the actors and they deserve to have a bit more you know a bit more time spent on them oh nice okay I'm going through the comments because apparently they don't automatically update update um oh. Monica mentioned that the child was originally a Wookiee and it was being Ooh. used for an Ewok which I can see when it's tiny huh. and furry but I, I don't know I like the the baby baby Yoda version because you don't ever see any other of Yoda's species. Like he's yeah. the first. Ghost is in Rogue One, so maybe any of the crew there that'd be awesome. Yeah. Last movie I saw in a theater, Rise of Skywalker is the last movie I saw in a theater. It's yeah. been. I'm trying to think what that might have been because it literally was right before, and then Rise of Resistance opened last January. Yeah, which I was think. Fantastic. I think possibly the last one I saw in a theater was either to see Frozen 2 again because I wanted to study that <laughs> or it might the last thing I might have seen in the theater was when they put Spy Fall for Doctor Who in in the theater that might have been the last thing I saw in the theater I can't even remember I, th I wouldn't be surprised if it was that because I had a pretty packed January and then I was traveling a lot for work like I was at the parks more than I was out in movies which I'm glad that I'm glad that was the decision because of how like we went to the parks um, literally like the week before they closed them down in March, my friend and I. So FYI, if you ever need anything picked up from downtown Disney that they're, they're putting out, let me know. Um, I am going this week to pick up sabers for a friend who cannot go during the week, but they're dropping them in downtown. FYI, they're dropping the new color changing Ahsoka lightsabers in downtown Disney. Yeah. Um, I'm going to the parks. I'm hopefully, hopefully it'll be safe. I'm, I'm planning a trip for Magic Kingdom's 50th anniversary. So I'm hoping to get that then. So I definitely had some friends go that are in Florida, uh, go to the parks right now and say that Disney is handling it very well. State of Florida, yeah. not so much, but Disney yeah. is handling all the procedures. And then same thing with downtown Disney. They opened up part of DCA for shopping and food until we had another lockdown come on. And they were 
anytime someone moved away from the table, it was like the the bees came in and cleaned everything up. And it's, I mean, it's a lot more time consumptive and, and it's, yeah. But yeah, people but... kept their distance. They kept their mask on. People only ate when they sat someplace that was designated to sit down and eat. And that's the only time they took their mask off and everything's marked. Um, go early. I would say go early. If you're going to downtown Disney, go early and go on a weekday. But right now they're taking shopping reservations. I, if you haven't noticed. So, cause holidays, yeah. FYI. Yeah. 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 Um, the Magic Kingdom's 50th anniversary is until like October. So I'm hoping. Mm, yeah. Uh, better by then i'm like i just want fireworks and i want the shows back that's all <laughs> i want celebration yeah because that was a bummer this year um yeah. for for then that's for those that aren't just local like i live in anaheim i live like two miles from the park so like i was really excited oh. about this year because like yeah. i wasn't gonna get a hotel i mean i should have probably gotten a hotel to be in like in the middle of it but it's it's okay to be bummed about things that didn't happen this year um, and also care about what is going on in the lives lost. I, I would yeah. say that. Um, trying like to think I'm, thing yeah, I'm thinking I might try to go to, because they rescheduled Celebration for 2022. So I'm, they like, did. if they put more tickets up, I might try to go. I might at the very least try to enter the costume contest, because I think if you get in the costume contest, like D23, you get um, like at least a pass for that day. So we'll see. Depends on. <laughs> Fair. <how> go. <laughs> Cause I, I was thinking about going, but then I was like, eh, I don't know. And so I, I didn't, I didn't buy tickets, but it does look fun. You know, that I'm more into it, you know, than I was last year. <laughs> so. Sorry, I'm grabbing, I was like yanking my charger out to be able to plug it into my laptop, which is closer. Um, <laughs> so that was that. So um, I've never been to I have never been to Celebration. This is going to be my first year. I've had friends that have gone. Like, I have friends in the 501st and so yeah. and Rebel Legion and everything like that. And so I've learned that sort of stuff from them. And I was like, you know, I'll enter the uh -oh. the draw. Like, you have to sit in a waiting room. Like, it's a, like the spinning thing. And is my thing doing very Oh, you keep, you keep spinning stuff. Okay. And I ended up getting, does it keep freezing on me? That better yeah a little bit but right. i think we're good now <laughs> all right perfect um anyways i i have tickets and i figured all else fails i could easily sell them at cost if i something came up that i couldn't do it yeah. anyways um yeah so I'm, I'm, oh but it's because i'm over on um, you know the opposite coast it's a bit <laughs> Yeah, so definitely. Because I usually, I usually go once a year for Gallifrey One, the Doctor Who convention out in LA. Um, but I did go to D23, which I think was at the at, at the Anaheim Convention Center. And that was... I heard it was wild. Oh, uh, I don't think I'd go again because it's so hard to get into stuff. <laughs> like That's what I heard. And then, like, yeah. I've heard some interesting things from folks that are, like, pin collectors. And, like, they're trying to get all the exclusive. And, like, people got, like, stepped on and wild stuff like that um yeah like I, if if disney was more in charge of it i think it'd go better because like like there were like the only reason i got into the panel was that all of a sudden all of the volunteers for the convention center just like weren't there and there was like a stampede and we like we had to go or else we were gonna get stepped on oh my God. Like, it like it was like, i heard they were just really bad for it being a disney thing i was like i don't know what's going on here <laughs> See, I can't, I can't even imagine that happening in cosplay because, like, so many people, yeah. and especially in, just, like, D23, there are princesses running around. Like, not running, but, like, there are princesses in that area. So, like, I can't even imagine someone, like, losing, yeah. like, stepping on it. Mm -mm, I would lose my collective I mean, stuff. I think that, I think that day was the day I was dressed as, as Violet from The Incredibles because I was hoping to get in the animation panel, and I did, and that was, that was fun, but I was just, like, it was a madhouse, so I hope they they figure that out better for celebration and future D23s because it was it was crazy. Like I don't, I think I I've said before the only reason the only time I go back to D23 is if I get in the costume contest because again you, yeah. you don't travel or anything included, but they will give you a pass for the day and at least that looks fun. But I'm just like it was that just sounds stressful. It, yeah, because right. like, like the live action panel, which was you know Marvel, Star Wars, all those stuff was like it felt like the line was done at like 2 a.m yeah 
I bet. Yeah, that was because you had the opportunity of possibly seeing the, 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 the huge stars. Like, I get it. Yeah. Um, so I think we've talked about all of the news from the investor meeting and then um, some tangents, which was honestly expected with me. Um, is there anything else that we've missed or want to touch on? Because apparently an hour is not the yeah, limitation. Yeah, uh, it's more than an hour now, so... Yeah, I like. I thought maybe that's something Instagram has changed because I thought people just yeah. got kicked off in an hour. So, yeah, I learned a thing. Um, Monica, is there anything else that we missed on or like we want to touch on? Yeah, gushing wise. But yeah, it's just everything looks so much fun. I hope they just do everything like one at a time, like end a season of something before they start the new one. Or else, I'm not going to have any time to watch everything. I I hope they release it episodically. Yeah. Um, and I hope that people are better about spoilers mm -hmm. because my, uh, I think my biggest complaint about spoilers for the Mandalorian, this, like this run is that sometimes people will post not direct spoilers, but someone that I know is a fan of say this person and is like, ah, they did it. They did it. Right. And their stories. And that's all they text. And I'm like, yes. Like, like, I don't, like, and now I know so, so-and-so shows up or mm -hmm. drops, so like, just a quote not standing. And, like, even if you don't say who said the quote, like, the quote was, like, I, if you know Star Wars enough, you knew. I was like, oh, so it's an episode that involves this person or people suddenly, this influx and they're all posting. And I get it. You're trying to capitalize on the interest and, and then the algorithm and the, the hashtags being down has been a, a thing <laughs> that we've been dealing with as well, like on Pebble Geek, as well as on like personal accounts. They, they did finally put um, recents back on Instagram. Oh, yeah. good. I was like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> but like people were trying to capitalize on the interest and they're like, oh yeah. So like so-and-so has showed up. Let me post my cosplays or like my this and this. And I'm like, I get it. But also, it's not even been a day. Like, I literally just woke up on the West Coast. I don't I don't stay up to watch them because I work a job that I have to get up. Yeah. So, like, if and I, I stay up that late, it'll mess my whole sleep schedule up. And then I'll want it. Anyways. Because um, they drop, you know, midnight West Coast time. So, it's like 3 a.m. here. I'm like, I'm Disney like, time. Yep. <laughs> I got up early, like, like the, the week that everybody was kind of, you know, guessing that Ahsoka was going to mm -hmm. show up. I did wake up a bit earlier than I normally would to watch that because I didn't want spoilers and then even even just like going on Twitter you know they'll have the hashtag Mandalorian is trending and then they'll have like trending with and then it'll be like spoilers and I'm like listen because <laughs> I think I think you know the, the week that the Ahsoka episode came out you know it said hashtag Mandalorian trending with Ahsoka and Grogu and I'm like well I'm glad I watched it or else I would have been completely spoiled thanks Twitter yeah <laughs> Thankfully, I don't Twitter, which yeah. I, I've heard from many a fan, especially like many a fan that <laughs> Twitter is accessible for Star Wars from what yeah. I've heard. And this is coming from not just like Raylos and not just like new fans or old. It's, but apparently it's accessible for like everything. But um, yeah. Yeah, I only like, probably kind of like social media where you kind of have to figure out who you're following. Yeah have a block or mute list ready to go and i and i can imagine like more so than on instagram that hashtags that were just so trending and so it'll immediately pop up and there's no spoiler warning so no. my my thing is that um if you, even if it's a little thing just just right i'm about to like spoiler spoiler warning i'm about to start reacting yeah and if it's like i'm so just don't watch my next story because that's when I what that's when I get hit is when I'm like flicking through stories like half asleep or like, because that's healthy to do the first thing in the morning. But um, <laughs> or some you're doing it mindlessly and then then you're like crap because you don't always think about it. Um, and I've no, had to no. be hyper vigilant. And I think someone was so they saying they got spoiled by an out of context quote. Yeah, like I'm sorry if you're a fan. A lot of us are nerds and like do yeah. like are, they're smart, so we put this yeah. stuff together. Yeah. Uh, be kind. Don't spoil people. Let them have their joy in the middle yeah. of a pandemic. I know. Yeah, like I, I always try to put spoilers, especially if I know it's a, if it's something big that I'm gonna post, you know. But yeah, because it's like you, you can post anything and people are gonna figure it out, especially if they're yeah. Famous. It's just I think the embargo, like the the embargo, from what I'm seeing is like. It, by Monday, people are like, well, you've had all weekend. 
Yeah. And I'm like, that's fair. There's not anywhere to go, really. Yeah. <laughs> Theory. So, like, but, um, and I think giving three days, I think that's the most we can ask for. Um, mm-hmm. With it being uh, released on Friday. So I'm curious to see what the release schedule is going to be. Um, I need to look at it all like in a, like a time, like almost like a Gantt chart of when these series are releasing alongside the Gantt chart of when the Marvel series are all releasing. So I yeah. can accordingly. Um, yeah. It looks like it's mostly going to be Marvel, at least at the start of next year, because I think they said WandaVision in January and then Falcon and Winter Soldier in March. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited about WandaVision the new Spider-Man and the new Doctor Strange and the multiverse because of multiverse. Because bring me my mutants. They didn't say the word mutants during that entire like talk about Marvel, which made me mad. <laughs> but only because I wanted to hear about it. They also didn't mention Oscar Isaac uh, for Moon Knight, which honestly, like tangentially Star Wars note made me sad because Oscar's wonderful. Um, and I hope he's still with the the program. Like, I'm so he's the, the movie. Um, but yes, I want to see how they're going to bring in the mutants. And I think the multiverse is the best way they can do that. I think that's why they have it all front-loaded. Um, it's already been confirmed that Tobey Maguire, and I can't, and I, I didn't watch this, this Spider-Man series, but the other... <laughs> The other actor that played Spider Man, <laughs> and I, oh, I have friends that are like rolling over, like, like oh, don't name. you know these things? But you know who I'm talking about? Like, they're... I can't it's remember. Andrew, his name. The other yes, one? yeah, it was Andrew. It was I can't remember his last name, but it was an Andrew. Um, yeah, Spider Man's not my main my main follow, but I'm really excited to pull. They're pulling in Andrew Garfield. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> my main prerogative is that they do rogue correctly. And everyone that I've known and that knows me has heard me step up on this like tall stack of soapboxes uh, about how they need to not wreck Rogue this time around. Um, because they sure made her a shadow of her comic self. And even her series, even her early animated series self. Like she's such a badass woman and she is real strong. Like she's Captain Marvel strong for reasons. So I really hope that they bring mutants in. I don't know why I keep doing this, but I really hope they bring mutants in. And I really hope that this happens before Captain Marvel 2. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I haven't, not as much into the, like, I like watching Marvel stuff, but I don't know yeah. a lot of extra comic stuff apart from, like, I'm like, just going <laughs> things about, um, like, Twitter. Sorry, I claim with the lightsaber now. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite things about watching, you know, either, Marvel stuff or Star Wars stuff or even, you know, some of the Doctor Who things I don't know as much about as, you know, other people do is I love it, like, when fans, instead of being kind of, like, you know, gatekeeping about stuff, they'll be like, oh, this is really cool because this ties into XYZ or this is an Easter egg or whatever. I love it when people do that sort of thing, you know. So I, I, I'll be excited to see kind of, like, yeah. people talking about how Falcon and Winter Soldier and, and WandaVision, how that ties in. Because I already saw some stuff about, you know, people looking at the trailers and they're like, oh, this is an Easter egg where this might be this or whatever. And I'm like, cool. I recognize, but I'm like, that's really cool. I love learning about that sort of stuff. So. You could always start reading comics and get Marvel <laughs> Unlimited and yep. start reading some comics. I say not trying to enable you at all, but Disney and Marvel has been really good. And I hope they bring this to the Star Wars like franchise because they have how they are expanding the universe um, into the screen in, on the screen. Um, all the little Easter eggs, all the comic nods. Like I know Lacey's going to talk about Loki, but there's one of the, the the Loki costume at the end that you see him in is literally taken from the comics, a comic run. The one I reference that has like terrible in, in cover art, but is apparently like a good read, except if you can get over the art. But they they take that look from comics and I'm hopeful that seeing, especially what they mentioned the Winter Soldier and the Falcon, um, that there's so many little things that I need to talk to someone who knows some comics about this so I can nerd out aggressively, but I'm hoping that because of what glimpses we've seen even in just these previews they've dropped um, hearken to the comics, I'm hoping that 
they delve more into the style of the comics because the thing with at least Marvel 616 is that, wow, everything is, con- like, characters can show up in, in all sorts of issues. Deadpool can show up in an X-Men issue, or, like, a different X-Men or Avenger can show up on a Deadpool issue. Like, there's crossovers. Yeah. And that's something that Kevin, um, Kevin Fe- 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 he mentioned that he's like, yeah. you can see how we're going as a more interconnected and bringing it to Star Wars, I really hope that starts happening in the man, like the Mandalorian timeline. And I yeah. think that's what's going to because there seem to be at least two or three series. Like, there's going to be the Mandalorian, Ahsoka, and the the Rain the Rangers of the New Republic. Yeah. yeah, those are all confirmed to that timeline. Yeah. So it would be a disservice if they didn't have tie-ins. And I know right. it's. Uh, I know it's done a lot of like TV, like Grey's Anatomy has that like Station 19 and there's like those sorts of crossovers, but I think they could do it really well. Yeah. Um, and everyone's going to be watching everything anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. I think what we've learned today is watch Fall in Order, watch or play Fall in Order, and this is. <laughs> <laughs> Soka's awesome. <laughs> And and... I can't wait to see more of her. And I feel I'm I'm very, you know, even though these were kind of pricey, I'm like, I made a good investment because now I can make all of her costumes from the new series. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about uh, this. So this is Ben Solo's Padawan hilt. And oh. what does this emitter remind you of? What's that color? Like, does this, is this grandmama, like Padme and her grandmama, like her, her color, like um, lake oh. dress, maybe? Sorry. Soft, awesome. soft boy Ben Solo, I will fight you. <laughs> fight someone for it. For anyone that says he can't be, he shouldn't have been redeemed. I'm like, he was a person. He was still yeah. a person. Thanks. Um, you could get really low and do terrible things and still work to be redeemed. Um, you could be yeah. abused and still be redeemed. Like I, like I said, you know, I, I feel yeah. like that's the important story to tell, you know, especially right now. But. Absolutely. But yes, a lot of stuff. This is going to be up on our Temple of Geek um, Instagram. I hope it doesn't get cut off at a certain point because <laughs> we talked about a lot of stuff, some non-Star Wars stuff. And a shout out to whoever said Killjoys was awesome uh, because I find very few Killjoys fans. So feel free to like hit me up. We can talk about Killjoys because I don't have many people I can yell into the void about Killjoys. <laughs> All right. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm sorry we went over on time, um, except we had fun. So yeah, <laughs> um, maybe we should do this again when things start dropping. I would say. Yeah, I know. Hopefully, hopefully, because the, they didn't really say anything about when the Star Wars stuff is really going to be out. So hopefully, there will be more news soon. There will be more news, and we'll, and Temple Geek will let you know yeah. when we have news because we're real stoked about it. So. <laughs> Have a great rest of the weekend, everyone. Thanks for joining.